it's Christine and I am on my way back home from Utah to Los Angeles. It is a very long drive and my ETA is around midnight when I'll get in. But I wanted to stop really quick and check out Fort Cove. So they do free tours. Let's see if we can go in, pop in for a quick tour and check out Fort Cove. Line pit up the canyon and ash on top of the volcano over there. That's there's, why this there's a volcano? Sand. Over there, but it's not active or I wouldn't be here, believe me. This whole side is business. That whole side is bedrooms. The services, the road we just crossed, the stagecoach came from each direction every day. Freighters, miners, settlers, get, uh, territory officials, church officials, very busy byway. So this was a nice rest stop for folks, even then. So you just see things of the period. But you don't want to know too much. Is I'll this all research. original? Everything that's in here, or no. some of it brought in? But they're all they're all antiques, mm -hmm. except this chair, and I'll show you the other thing. This was a here 150 years ago. The people on the wall, she was only 4'10", and that was her chair. So oh. she was a tiny lady, <clears throat> he was 6'1". So oh, wow. So again, the family room, do you notice that the doors and the windows are this deep, room. indicating how thick even the interior walls are. Yeah. Uh, Is that door smaller than most doors? Not in the Ford. <laughs> it just feels like a tiny door. Because it goes in, it has that illusion, especially because it's so dark. So you just see various needlework and so forth in this room. Wow. They painted their woods, and here's why. You see the back of this door on the uh -huh. wardrobe. If the whole thing looked like that, look what it would look like. Like this little chair would look like that, but they painted it. They were Europeans. They had finer woods in their homelands. They knew they could look nicer. That's bird. That's a bird's eye walnut. Just because they knew it could be prettier if it didn't look like that. Huh. It's really really pretty. Pretty. I was busy earlier, but I think the weather's got a scared off. Yeah, it's a, it's a little storm feeling. It is. Uh, this room was. Uh, these three room, first rooms were for guests. You didn't rent the whole room. You rented half a bed for a quarter. No mm. telling who's in the other half. That was a common thing in that day. The bed, the quilt on the front is here is a reversible peacock. You can see on the corner down by the floor when that was loomed. Still perfectly, uh, no holes in it. Wow. An example of this that we have on the right here is Lindsay Woolsey, and a multiple color. So it is combined with wool in this case. Still an expensive process. But like the blanket on the rocker there, that's an old blanket. Some of the quilts are old, some are more recently made, but they are all period quilts. Huh. On the table there we have a 1858 Bible. Uh, Old Testament tells about coming of Christ, New Testament is Mormon ministry. The little book supporting the Bible there is another testament of Christ, the Book of Mormon, which and that's the second edition. That's his ministry after his resurrection among the Americas. Some people think the Book of Mormon is just a history of the Mormon church. It is not. It's more scripture. Oh. Feeling that God can talk to his people at any time of the earth's age. It just tells his prophets what he wants written, and that's scripture. Huh. Now, so is this, this oh, see, is this area, um, like, is this done through the, the church? This, the tours the and everything? Is, this site is.
in there. I saw it sneaking. So, like I said, this whole side is business. The other side, the whole side is bedrooms. <coughs> so, anything you see, for example, the books, the ledgers are exactly that. They are period ledgers of tr transactions in this area. <coughs> the um, stuff on the walls, kind of things that they, oh, that strong box where we got it. <laughs> 70 pounds empty. Oh, wow. It's a strong box for the stage. So the stage and the U.S. Mail do business in this room. The fireplaces, you might notice, look like they're for display. They're so tiny, but they're actually Rumford fireplaces. <coughs> they are uh, probably up as the legend makes it so the smoke easily goes out. I encourage so you come back in. The smoke gets to me. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> uh, so the buffalo hide on the couch there mm -hmm. is massive. It's beautiful. The more interesting, you see too many legs on the front. Oh, it pulls out to be, <laughs> it pulls out to be double white for sleeping. Oh, it's like a futon. <laughs> the slats, you see the slats almost. Oh, that's great. Right. This is the only room in which three of the panes in the window are original to the fort. When oh. the fort closed in 1890 for a hundred years, private families lived in here. So it got in various stages of disrepair or whatever until the church got it back and um, was able to restore it. Everything you see is antique, very old, or made replicated to period. The reason we know so much about this place is extensive record keeping. We can keep, I know you're in a hurry. The door frames on this side are this one. Did you the window? Okay. Uh, the reason, and you see replicated the little wires for the telegraph. Oh, I hear it. Yeah. This is one of the main reasons that they built a fort here. You see in the upper right corner, a tiny part that moves. Can you mm -hmm. see that? So, this is actually Mars code saying hello, code fort, just like your phone ringing. So someone on this side says, I'm here, send your message. Underneath replicates a battery of sulfuric acid, copper, and water that would make a little voltage that would go over these little copper lines. It would only go 30 or 40 miles. That's why relay stations were necessary. There was nothing huh. still between Beaver and Fillmore, the next biggest towns even now. And so this was a perfect relay station area for the telegraph. Yeah. So again, you see how deep these, I don't think it's true, how deep the windows and doors are. Yeah. Anything that you can inside walls is very thick. These two things that I'm sure you've seen before. This is a human yoke. You see the... Oh, yeah. The ropes come down for carrying water. Yeah. In the far corner are antique, uh, is, is an antique quilting frame. The ironing board looks still big and clunky like it <laughs> still does. A, so between each chimney, you might have noticed there are also There was never a major battle picture, however. This was built during the Black Hawk Indian War. Uh, Black Hawk, who was the chief, who was the troublemaker, uh, when it was all said and done and lots of people had been killed in a lot of trouble, uh, he went around trying to say, I'm sorry, kind of fell on deaf ears. There was never a big battle here. Sometimes, oh, we can go ahead, we'll go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. So, we didn't want to miss this. This is really big. You think in the middle of nowhere, 150 years ago, why does it look this nice? And I would think it'd be far more rustic. The whole place, actually. Mm -hmm. But you think, realize that the pioneers were actually Europeans. They were cultured and refined and liked mm -hmm. nice things. And so wherever they went, they made it as nice as possible. These dishes, the pattern was found in the archaeological dig that was done when this was made a site. And so all these people far hatch other pretty pieces of the share. Even to the linens on the table, Sister Hinkley, white tea is nice. Who would you sit across from here? You would sit across from a cowboy, Indians, uh, statesmen, church officials, settlers, miners, freighters. Very eclectic group went through here. A stagecoach came from this direction on that road we just crossed. It would charge 50 cents for a meal. Anyone that couldn't pay, uh, their mission here was whoever's out on that road, even if they can't pay either here or the blacksmith shop, you help them get on down the road, even if they can't pay. And this is the, something they did for 20 years here until it closed. This is the exact model, but not the exact stove that was here. Pretty fancy with double ovens. Why would they need that? You see the shiny pans on the wall? 
five pound bread loaf pans. We oh. made 10 to 12 every day. Imagine, a normal day, would, an average day would be, and again, I know all this, is extensive record keeping and journals. Uh, 30 to 45 people a day to feed. They had a large garden, the whole south side was a garden, and two more in the back. You see the butter churns here, they had a 30 cow dairy herd. Of course, they had their own cattle, pigs, ducks, chickens, the whole normal thing. Um, if this was uh, too hot, this of course would heat up the room quite, quite a bit in the summer. So you see other Dutch oven and cast iron types of things that would have used on the uh, open fire. Once they became friends with the Indians in the area, which they did because they were, they treated them like good neighbors. Uh, in the fort here. I want you to see the, at least the last room. Looks like there's someone still in there. So I was telling you, there's never a major battle pitched here. However, every night they would lock up the, the front doors as well are original. Thank you.